I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. 'Cause I found my way. I found my way. In bad times, I know I'll be okay. 'Cause I found my way. Everybody. Welcome to another episode of Amazing Fishing Adventures. Uh, Today um, is not about fishing, um, it's about the invader, our camping trailer that we've been using extensive, extensively over the last year and a half. So we've got about a year and a half now. Um, yeah, so what I basically want to show today is mainly the upgrades I've done to the trailer since we've since we've got it and just give a bit of feedback um, so we've been using it a lot for fishing um, you know two nights here three nights there um, and and so far it's just absolutely brilliant it's it's very quick to set up it takes me about you know the way it's set up at the moment that takes about five minutes and then to put the canopy on, it's uh, probably another 10-15 minutes. Um, yeah, so that's brilliant. Then also last year, we in October, um, the whole family went camping in the Kruger National Park. Um, yeah, and it, it uh, absolutely tied beautifully to, to the park. Um, and during that trip as well, we did set up the full with the uh, the main awning and also all the side panels etc we did set that up and then in December we went for 10 days camping in the Kruger and there was two nights where it rained so much the one night in Skukuza it rained for it rained about 135 millimeters and um, yeah it, um, we had no issues with the with the invader. Um, everybody was dry. Um, on the main awning I had two tent poles that bend a little bit but that's because I didn't drop the side poles enough so some of the water was um, was building up on top of the awning. Um, and then also um, in middle December myself and Thomas went camping and fishing at Carp Haven and every night we had a massive storm and we absolutely had almost no issues the only thing I did add was a storm strap so I, I you know um, we've, we've got it there so if, if it's needed we've I've put one storm strap over the awning and that seems to be working very well so overall extremely extremely happy with the invader um, one or two things that maybe but it's, it's really not a negative as um, if we prepare for camping we have to open it, the whole thing up um, you don't have to there's ways of only opening up a little bit of it but um, usually it works best to open up the whole um, uh, trailer with the tent and everything um, open that up then it's quite easy to pack all your clothes um, and all the, the the bedding and the yeah, the blankets, etc. So, uh, yeah, um, it's. Um, but other than that, yeah, absolutely, absolutely love, love this trailer. Um, then, and I would definitely recommend it. So, if anybody is looking for a, a camping trailer that you can go off road, that you're not going to get wet in, that is properly sealed, you know, definitely go for the Invader. But I must also the uh, disclaimer there is I haven't used. Um, many other camping trailers but you know this one I, I've got no regrets of buying it um, but the main purpose of this video is to show you the upgrades I've done to mainly the batteries and the electricity system and yeah um, let's get into that yeah uh, I got uh, in touch with a guy by the name of Peter Barnard and he redid the whole electricity system of the invader for me. Um, 
So what we've done is we've installed a whole bunch of additional batteries, an inverter, um, yeah, and all the wiring was just sort of upgraded to, to make sure that if you really go off-road that, that there will no, be no issues, no short, nothing will short, etc. And um, let's start going through all of those changes. So first I'm going to show you. We also agreed that the whole control panel um, So here you can see I did, yeah, you, re you read it, the control panel So there's a gauge there that shows that the, you know, how fully charged it is um, If you're charging the system there's a nice dial to show that It shows the inverter as well as the load and then we've got all these different buttons for the battery monitor switching on all the 12 volt um, power points switching on the inverter um, the fridge is also now on a separate switch the lights the um, all the DC plugs uh, then the geyser uh, whether you want it on gas or electricity and the water pump okay so and then he also read it this little box here you can see there at the end it's now put on inverter i can switch it now to off or if you are camping where there is power you just switch it up there that it's using the main escom escom power so um almost you know every time we go camping for fishing there's no electricity so the inverter is absolutely absolutely amazing so that also means that the microwave that also means that the microwave and everything is working see that's working um, the trailer at the moment is not plugged into any electricity source that's mainly coming from the inverter also got a toaster a steamer um, so yeah that's absolutely absolutely brilliant okay um, I showed you the microwave is still working I just plugged in the toaster there's the normal plugs the outside plugs and okay there's the toaster on and then here on the gauge there you can see on the inverter it shows you it's using about what 60 amps um i think the toaster is about a thousand two hundred watt rated um yeah so what's really nice about this you can see everything that's going on Okay, so let's switch the toaster off quickly. Okay. You can see it's gone down. And let's, for instance, put on the fridge. The f okay, yes, and there the fridge kicked in. You can see there's a. You can see what's allowed quite nice it usually runs about less than five amps um, which is not too much okay now quickly I'm just gonna plug in the electricity so you can see how the charging works from from electricity point of view okay so that's plugged in now And there you can see charge. It's now about 25 amps. Okay, so this is just working absolutely amazing. Very, very chuffed with this. Uh, very chuffed with the work that Peter did. And um, yeah, so effectively we can go completely off grid. We've got all the different options. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just very lacquer. Okay, let me show you the inverter. So in this compartment below, um, 
was the previous battery system there was one battery in there and Peter built this custom plate here so on top is the inverter it's a 3000 watt it's probably quite a bit of overkill um, I was planning to get a 2001 but I couldn't find one so I went for the 3000 so I can basically run almost anything off this inverter then you also get this air holes to make sure it doesn't overheat it's just extremely neatly done and then here at the bottom and I'll show you just now on the other side is the batteries and what we've now well, what I've now got in there is three Blue Nova lithium um, batteries and they're absolutely brilliant um, so here on the other side here's the battery compartment and I'm not going <laughs> to open that up now um, but all the batteries is in there you could see proper fuses was installed um, yeah and so far this has just been working working like a dream so if we go camping for three days I don't even need to to um, use the solar panels or charge anything this just lasts um, so it's great you also read it this component this is where the solar panels is coming in um, and basically if we do this and then yeah here's the connection so i can plug in three different solar panels and then it will will do all the charging okay now just quickly want to show you the solar panels so i've got two of these this is 100 watts with quite a long lead so you can still park my defender or the invader in the shade and then this is how it connects so like i mentioned i can connect up to three of these and 100 watt gives you about a 5 amp charge so it's quite a nice sunny day and okay it's charging there because main power is on let me switch that off quickly okay now you're only getting the solar charge which is just about it's about six amps okay and i showed you the fridge runs around five so one solar panel is enough to keep the one fridge going for the day and then if you've got another one it, it's enough to charge the batteries so you can use it for lights some fans or whatever during the day or in the evening okay and because we put in three batteries there was not enough space on that side to put the charging unit in so what he did and let me show you here on the side there here's the whole unit that does the charging of the batteries the solar as well as the solar charging and the management of the, of the solar unit so this is yeah extremely compact so um i didn't lose any any space so i went from one battery no inverter to three batteries a massive inverter and a proper charging unit um, without giving up any space which is absolutely brilliant now the other beautiful thing is um, you can see here uh, you also just make sure that all the wires you know when, when you drive around and you go in the bush this is not going to move it's not going to cause any damage to to um to the wires and cause a short um and i'll show you now my land rover but these two plugs this plugs into the land rover so while we going somewhere land rover is charging the batteries making sure the fridge and everything you know that's not gonna um, that will always have power and then here's a connection for a camera so the other thing you did install for me is a rear view camera you can see there's the wire going out there's a camera so while towing the invader 
I can in real time see what's going on behind me. Then um, I did quickly fold up the invader. Now you can clearly see here's the camera that was installed. And I'll show you just now how it looks when it's connected to the to the defender. And yeah, just the one last thing I want to show you. This is you also put in this uh, shelf so that you can see there's a door from inside. There was no shelf here before, so I usually put in all my tent pegs. Here's my storm straps, etc. Goes in here, and then yeah, um, whatever I put here I can access from inside. But usually I just put here my um, all my electricity leads um, etc so yeah that that's about it that's that's the upgrades we've done yeah so i'm quickly gonna move the land rover into position so i can show you how the two systems connect and let me also just show you you can see you also built this custom uh, plate for me at the back of the, my Land Rover so you can see I can plug and solder directly into the Land Rover and um, there's the normal trailer um, connection for all your indicators there's the camera connection and then there's also some additional uh, power points that I can use um, for lights or you know whatever um, so yeah let's quickly move the landing okay so uh, Peter also installed um, the screen for me and a rear view camera for the Land Rover so this makes it extremely easy to reverse and look up the trailer Perfect. Perfect. Okay. okay, I'm not going to hook it up now. Um, just mainly want to show you the, the power plugs and the camera. That goes in there. Okay. The camera I'm going to do quickly. Okay, so I've got the camera connected. Just gonna switch this on. And okay, there you can see that's the camera at the back of the invader. Uh, it's not 100 percent level at the moment because the invader is not level. Um, but uh, it works. It, it's really really such um, a great thing to have while you're driving especially if you want to make change lanes or you, yeah you can just see all the vehicles that's behind you um, so this is really a big help okay so everything is plugged in i'm gonna start the car and i'll still do a separate video video on the land rover but yeah, also got a battery system in that Peter did for me. Okay, so here I can do the switch. Whether something that should be on charge or not on charge. Okay, you can see there's the voltage coming through. And okay, so it's charging now. Yeah. So on the Land Rover, I also got a little panel here. You can see the, it's charging, and actually, it can charge up to f an excess of 50 amps, which is brilliant. Um, but the battery is already quite full. 
Okay, and then let's go to the invader. And there you will see a charge just coming through. Which is nice. So, so when we go camping, I've got the option of just starting up the Land Rover. It will charge the batteries. I've got an option of putting in um, solar panels. So in this compartment, I've got two 100 watt solar panels, which we use often, especially if we, I mean, when we when the Kruger last year, uh, there was three nights where we stayed in a place where there was, was no electricity. And I didn't have the Land Rover Defender with me. We went with the Land Rover Discovery to the Kruger. So the solar panels worked brilliantly, but um, basically I've got options um, if we camp somewhere where there's electricity, we plug it in. I can charge the batteries with solar, or I can just idle the Land Rover. And what's nice, if the Land Rover is idling, um, it's connected to the invader. And then the other very nice thing, and he also gave me, I've got 10 meter worth of, uh, worth of cable. So if we do go camping, I can park the Land Rover in a different place. And then I've got a 10 meter cable to still connect the Land Rover with the invader to make sure it can charge if I want it to charge. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really chuffed with the system. Uh, Peter, Peter Barnard, he does absolutely amazing work. I'll put um, the link to his company, um, his number and everything in the description below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this video if you like this channel um, please hit that like button it really helps the channel and if you want to see future videos please subscribe till next time cheers